Hello everyone, and welcome back to our lesson video for this week. I hope uh, you're safe and uh, healthy as we begin our discussion for this week. May we invoke uh, the presence of the Lord first as we say in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we praise and glorify your name each day. We thank you for all the blessings, especially the gift of life you showered us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn in this time of global pandemic. Bless our classmates, teachers, and school that we may bring hope to our community. We humbly ask for your forgiveness to all our shortcomings and help us to be a better person. Grant us wisdom, peace of mind, and a pure heart to be a blessing to other people. Father, we are grateful uh, that you are true to your word, uh, that you are with us and will not leave us. May you continue to bless us with your grace and love. We ask all this through Christ our Lord, uh, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, and now, before we proceed to our lesson, let's do have first our one-minute warm-up, and uh, please follow the given step on the next slide. You feel energized now as we start our learning content or our discussion for this week's lesson. Uh, you have your preparatory activity, which is entitled as uh, a jumbled uh, letters. We're in the given direction. Uh, you will going to arrange the jumbled letters in uh, column A uh, to form a word uh, that is described in uh, column B. And we have the following for number one, uh, and that is actually called as a compass so a device that allows you to create a circle with a given with a given radius is called as a compass for number two we have equiangular so it means that all the angles of a polygon have the same measure and number three we have a square it is an example of a four-sided regular polygon that is equiangular and also equilateral and number four, you have any idea or answer? That is rotation. So basically, it is a 360 degrees or complete circular movement of an object around its center. And number five, we have equilateral. So it means that all sides of a polygon have the same measure. Did you get five out of five on it, on this preparatory activity? Very good if you have got it perfectly. So as we go over on our learning content, uh, so our learning content for this week, we have uh, geometric constructions that involves uh, polygons. We're in, uh, we have the following goals for this week's lesson. Uh, so at the end of the session, you should be able to construct um, triangles, squares, rectangles, and regular pentagons, and also a, uh, regular hexagons. And the next target, which is to solve problems involving sides and angles of a polygon. This is actually the continuation part of our lesson in the previous week. 
So let's have a recap regarding on our lesson. So what is a regular polygon? Again, a regular polygon that is both equilangular, when we are dealing with equilangular, that means they have equal angles and also equilateral, they have the same measurement of sides. And that is all its angles are the same measure and all its sides are the same length. And also a regular polygon, all regular polygons have a rotation symmetry. This means that a rotation of less than 360 degrees will carry the regular polygon onto itself. So in fact, a regular n-sided polygon has rotation asymmetry for any multiple of 360 degrees. In. So let's go over now on our first target which is on constructions. So constructions are a step-by-step -step procedure used to create precise geometric figures wherein there is no computation involved on it. And uh, there are actually um, materials that we need to consider in uh, constructing a geometry figures. So the first one we have uh, to recall, once again, we have compass. So this is a device that allows you to create a circle and also it can also help you to copy distances. So this is uh, a compass. And uh, we have the second one which is a straight edge or ruler. So anything that produces a straight line. So this is what uh, a ruler or a straight edge look like. Wherein you can also use if you only use it to draw straight lines and not uh, to measure. We have also this paper wherein uh, when a geometric figure is on a piece of paper, the paper itself uh, can be folded uh, to construct new lines. Take note also that you can construct some regular polygons by hand if you remember the definitions and properties of these regular polygons. With the additional help of geometry application software or a protractor, you can actually also you can construct any regular polygon. So we have now the following examples for the next slide. So let's have an example for construction. So we have this constructing an equilateral triangle. And we know that equilateral triangle, that is a three-sided polygon, wherein they have the same three, same side, and also three measurement of angles. The first step, you make an arc of point that are the length of ZY. So this one, you just measure this one, and then afterwards, you make an arc that is the length that is the same as the length of this so this is now our arc and then in step number two make another arc of points that are the length of x y away from z so we have now this arc we have x z or z x and then afterwards our step three connects point x y so we connect uh, x y and then afterwards uh, connect also z, z y and also connect z x and uh, therefore we have now the existence of equilateral triangle so this is now the geometric construction of an equilateral triangle so how about this given problem? We have geometric construction number two problem. We have x, y is one side of what will become equilateral triangle that is triangle x, y, z. And you need to put a point z in the correct place in order to make the equilateral triangle. Where should point z be placed with respect to points x and y? So this is the given figure. So for now, we will use a ruler or a straight edge. So step number one, we have to use a straight edge to draw a line segment that is x, y. So we will just um, measure the, um, the length of our side x, y. And then step number two, use a compass to measure the length of x, y. And then we will measure that one. So that is the second step as you can see on the given figure. And uh, step number three, we let the distance between uh, X and Y, so this one, be A. 
and then mark point Z with the same distance of XY away from our point uh, X and Y. And then afterwards, uh, using a ruler or a straight edge, draw a segment by connecting two points to form an uh, equilateral X, Y, Z. So you just um, connect Z, Y, and then Z, X. And then so let's have another example for construction. We have this problem, constructing a square by paper folding. So step number one, we fold uh, the circle so that the two halves overlap to create a line. So this is uh, the line that we create. We're in, uh, this is the diameter of uh, the given circle. And then afterwards, step number two, we fold again uh, the circle in uh, a half to create a line that bisect the diameter. So once again, we fold that one. So this is the line that bisect the given diameter. And we have a step number three. There are two diameters form that are perpendicular to each other. So this diameter and this diameter are perpendicular to each other. And therefore, using the ruler, we connect the four points of the intersection of the given circle to construct the square. So by this point to this point, so we now have this side and also to this point by connecting that one, we have now this side and this point by connecting this side, this point to this point. So we have now this side and also this point to this point, we have this side. So therefore, this is now the square that we construct by just a paper folding and also using a ruler. So as you have observed, a square is formed by connecting point B, C, D, E. And it is equilangular and equilateral also. Let's have also another problem or another construction. So we have constructing a pentagon inscribed in a circle. So meaning our pentagon is inside of our given circle. And if we are dealing with pentagon, that means it is a five-sided polygon. So step number one in, in constructing this one, we just draw a circumference and perpendicular diameters to ob obtain A and B. And then find the segment by sector of BO. So this one obtaining point X and we know, name it as X, point X. Then afterwards, step number two. So open the compass from X to point A. So this one, so point X to point A and draw an arc that will intersect in Y. The distance to A to Y, so this one. So we draw again an arc from A to Y. Then step number three, open the compass from A to Y to take the distance to the peri perimeter. So this one, from A to Y, and then take the distance to the perimeter and you will obtain a point F. So this is the point, which is point F. And then afterwards, step number four, you place the compass at F, this one, at F. You, you place your compass here and then repeat the distance four more times to find the vertices, the pentagon, F, E, D, C and A. And then in step number five, using a ruler, of course, or a straight edge, connect the points along with the A to obtain the pentagon. So you just connect A to C and also C to, C to D, so this point, and you, you need to also connect D to E and then F, sorry, E to F and A to F or F to A. And as you observe from this given figure, so a pentagon is formed after connecting points A, C, D, 
TENF. So it is also uh, equilangular and equilateral. So that is the construction of uh, a pentagon that is inscribed on a given uh, circle. Since you have already a basic concept regarding on uh, geometric uh, construction, let's have uh, to move on uh, now to our next target, which is on problem solving. But before that, uh, so in solving a problem solving, uh, we should uh, follow a uh, systematic uh, procedure wh wherein uh, we call it as uh, the Polya's problem solving techniques, wherein uh, we need uh, to apply the different steps in uh, solving problems. So according to this, we have uh, the step number one, which is uh, to understand the problem. Then after understanding the given problem, we will uh, devise a plan on how we will uh, solve the following uh, questions or problems that we have. And step number three, we carry out plan or that is the solution process. And number four, we look back on what is us and we need to answer the following uh, um, given problem on it. So that is uh, the following steps in uh, Polya's problem solving. So let's have this problem number one. So the rectangular lot measures 15 meter by 11 meter. So what is its area? So in this given problem, step number one, we need to solve the area of a rectangle that is measures by 15 and 11. And we know that the area of a rectangle is just simply A is equals to LW. We're in L represent for the measurement of the length and W represent the measurement of our width and A as the area. And we have the following given which is 15 as the length and 11 as the width. Therefore, we can substitute the following given 15 meter by 11 meter. We just multiply and we get 165 meter square. So therefore, the area of the given rectangle is just simply 165 meter square. So that is the given problem number one. What if we have this given problem, another problem? So supposed to be we will have uh, this problem in their mathematics group activity. Ryan was assigned to measure the exterior angles of uh, a given regular octagon. So what is the measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon. So since we are dealing on the exterior angles, step number one, solve for the measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon. And step number two, we know that the sum of measure of the exterior angle of any polygon is just simply 360 degrees. And the regular polygon has equal measures of angles and sides. So that was our lesson for the previous week wherein we have the exterior angle theorem. Wherein if we will deal on a regular octagon, that means it is an eight-sided polygon. So therefore, we let X as the measure of each exterior angle and we let X or N as the, sorry, N as the number of the sides of the given polygon. And in getting that, we just simply divide the following. So in getting uh, the measure of each exterior angle, and we let that one as x, we just divide uh, 360 degrees. So the solution, sorry, so the solution in getting uh, the measure of our exterior angle is uh, simply 360 degrees divided by n or all over n wherein n is the number of sides. In this problem, we are dealing on a octagon, therefore we have the number of sides, which is 8. Since we know already the number of sides of the given polygon, therefore we can now compute the um, given measurement of the exterior of each regular octagon. So therefore, 360 divided by 8, that is 45 degrees. So therefore, 
the measure of each exterior angle of our given regular octagon is just simply 45 degrees. Okay? So let's have this last problem. Anyway, this is additional problems regarding on uh, the application of a polygon in uh, the previous lesson that we have. So given the figure below, determine the unknown measure of uh, the exterior angle. So in this given, step number one, we need uh, to solve for the measure of each exterior angle of uh, the given uh, figure. And step number two, interior and exterior angles are considered as linear pair. When we are dealing with linear pair, that was on uh, the previous lesson that we have, that is actually supplementary to each other. So, step number three, wherein we will deal on the solution. So, therefore, if they are supplementary to each other, therefore, we can conclude that uh, 100 degrees and then the measurement of our angle X, that is just simply 180 degrees and then afterwards we can actually solve now the measure of our angle x we're in this one this is the unknown measure of the exterior angle of the given polygon therefore we have now by uh, transposing 100 to the right side of the equation therefore we have measurement of angle x is just simply 180 degrees minus 100 degrees and then we have now to simplify so the measurement of uh, the angle x is just simply 80 degrees 180 minus 100 it gives us 80 degrees so therefore the measurement of our angle x is just simply 80 degrees so that's how to solve the, the given problem number three and we're done on the following goals for this week lesson and to sum up so constructions are step-by-step -step procedures used to create precise geometric figures to create a construction by hand there are few tools that you can use and these are the following we have a compass and also you can use a straight edge or ruler and also a paper you can construct some regular polygons by hand if you remember the definitions and properties of these regular polygons. With the additional help of geometry application software or even a protractor, you can construct any regular polygon. And for your practice, you just try to answer Practice Now 15 on page 232 on your textbook. And uh, for your summative task, that is entitled as Performance 3, and that is 30 points, uh, Geometric Construction 2. So you need uh, to open your textbook on uh, page 234, that is Exercise A, D, Intermediate Level. So only number 6, 7, and 8. And then afterwards, uh, you submit that on Blasmo portal for this submission. Sorry, for, for the Blasmo portal for the submission of this output till March 8. And a friendly reminder, so kindly also finish your summative tasks, all the summative tasks for this subject course until March 8. We're in March 7 and 8 is your completion day and week 8 March 9 to 11, that is your quiz 2. And pointers to review, that is on focuses on the learning content, on the following, parallel lines, transversal, and also polygons. And uh, for our values integration, before we end our discussion, we have uh, this Marian core value, which is on uh, communion. Ours is uh, a finite earth based on the environmental principle number six wherein everything that we need is provided by nature in abundance whether that is food water energy minerals and air however some resources that we depend upon nowadays are extracted excessively but are slow to replace so what are the possible solutions that can you do as part of the marian community 
like in construction or our lessons on, on uh, the figures in geometry, we should know the basic concepts before applying them. And for my message, the higher the number of sides of polygon is, the higher is the sum of the measures of its interior angles. So it is also true that the higher you expect, the higher you achieve. I hope uh, you gained some knowledge about the lesson for this week. May we have now our closing prayer. And as we say, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn and the capacity to understand. Let our knowledge be of service not only for the attainment of our goals, but also for the benefit of others. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's it for this week. Keep safe and God bless.